Lord be with you. And also with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the servant in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have life eternal. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light, and does not come towards the light, so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light, so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, once upon a time, when people asked me what's the difference between the Roman Catholic Church and the American Catholic Church, I would say, well, for one thing, our priests don't play golf. <laughs> then Father Mike came along <laughs> and ruined my joke because he does play golf. And I've always been afraid of playing golf because I just knew that it's so crazy and so illogical and so silly. <laughs> right? To chase and around a little ball and, you know, and all that, that I would get instantly addicted to it. <laughs> <laughs> Want to do it, so I don't want to play miniature golf. I'm afraid of it. And <clears throat> I'm also afraid of something else. I love technology and I love computers and I use them constantly. But one thing I stay away from are those extremely sophisticated incredibly uh, technologically wonderful things, computer games, right? I'm just afraid that if I ever started one of those that I'd never get out because I'd just get so hooked into it. And I wouldn't be the first one. Once upon a time there were a couple of people, uh, David Pollard and Amy Powell were their names. They met guess where, on the computer, and they both got involved with a computer program called Second Life, any of you ever played Second Life? It's a very intricate computer game in which you create an avatar, a alter ego of yourself, in any form or way you want, and then you have that avatar live whatever kind of life that you choose to have your avatar live. And David and Amy both, uh, shall we say, were not, in the view of the world, very um, attractive people. They both made avatars of their ideal self. He was quite the hunk and she was quite the babe. <laughs> and after they met, they decided to have their avatars meet also. And so their two avatars met and fell in love and got married. And guess what David and Amy did in real life? They thought, what the heck, we should do the same thing. And so they got married. And after their wedding, they went home. And to start their honeymoon, they both went into separate rooms, got on the computer, and had their avatars <laughs> begin their married life together. <laughs> And so it went on for three years. They lived their marriage through this game, the Second Life game. Because in this game, you can have money and earn a living. And, and I guess if you pay a little bit of money, of real money, you can buy money uh, in the uh, virtual world that you create and all this stuff. Well, after three years, uh, Amy noticed that her husband online was spending a lot of time with some female avatars. <laughs> and she 
got a little suspicious, so she spent her virtual money <laughs> that she had earned online and hired a virtual private office <laughs> to follow her husband. And sure enough, that private eye caught him with the prostitute. And Amy was so hurt by this that she considered it adultery and filed for divorce in the real world. Um, <laughs> Now, I don't have to explain what's wrong with this picture. <laughs> <clears throat> These people were so caught up in this fantasy, unreal life outside of themselves that they let it destroy their own person. Well, when you listen to the gospel, did you catch the familiar summary of our Christian faith? John 3.16 you caught that? Mm -hmm. God so loved the world. What is it? That he sent his only son. So that everyone who believes in him not perish from eternal life. Very good. Okay, you probably cheated. <laughs> <laughs> so is I. But, yeah, I knew where it was. <laughs> okay, that is a very nice summary of our faith, right? Because it, it affirms our faith, number one, in God. God with the basis of God being love. Love so great that he sent his son, <clears throat> his son who suffered and died for us, uh, something we're about to <clears throat> look at and celebrate in great detail coming up in Holy Week, and all for the purpose of saving us, right? So John 3.16, which we see at football games and in and out Burger, <laughs> that's right, in and out Burger, uh, <clears throat> Tim Tebow, and yep. It is a wonderful, perfect expression of our faith. However, some people use that to say that only people who believe in Jesus can have eternal life. And that, my friends, I think becomes the disease of bursitis. Have you ever seen that disease? Bursitis? Bursitis. <laughs> Yeah, the disease of bursitis is where you can constantly recite verses that you don't understand, <clears throat> right? I mean, I can say G4 is a what? A load, even if I could pronounce that word, I still don't know what it means. I know it's important. I know i got to salute somebody that's uh, whatever that is. But I don't quite understand a, a load... Beans and bullets. Yeah, well, that's getting better. <laughs> but logistician or whatever that is, I can say it all day, but if I don't understand it, I should be careful of what I say. John 3.16, we want to be careful because if you look at the very next verse, <clears throat> God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world might be saved through him. So <clears throat> the very next sentence proves that it's not Jesus didn't come to save only people that knew him and believed in him. That salvation is open. Salvation only comes from Jesus Christ, but it's not necessarily limited to those who know him personally. Because not everybody has that opportunity to know him personally. Through circumstance of birth or whatever. But even more importantly than that is, if you read the whole context of what this is saying, that God is calling us to be in the light and that all that we do reflect that. So that David Pollard and Amy Powell have the right idea of getting outside of themselves <clears throat> to create something different than themselves, but they put it all in the wrong place and, of course, with a predictable disaster. God is calling us to take us in our own weakness, in our own sinfulness, in our own inadequacy and reach for something greater, but not the other life of, a, of an avatar, but that of a Christian. That is, we follow Jesus Christ in every way we can. That we model our behavior, not on some imaginary <clears throat> romantic figure that's created through artificial electrical signal, signals and pulses, 
but one that's truly in our hearts, one that truly reflects the Jesus that loves, or the God that loves, the God that saves, the God that serves, the God that tries to make the world a better place. This is what we are called to do. And if we want to get outside of ourselves and strive for another better life, then we pick Jesus as our model. Or some of Jesus' representatives that taught us well, perhaps your grandmother or a saint or somebody else that you could model yourself. But it's always along the lines of John 3.16. Love, salvation, make the world a better place, not by condemning but by serving. This is our simple message, our constant call <clears throat> to redeem ourselves that way, <clears throat> and no better time of the year to do that than this season of Lent. So, <clears throat> please stand.